hey, this is kind of neat. I opened up an old project before um, Logic Pro version 9. So I don't know when I created this, but the thing that caught my eye were some of the channel, uh, some of the tracks in here. And there was one called Roland XP30. And that reminded me that back in the, the early days of using Logic, I used to use external MIDI instruments. And this particular track is actually nothing more than an audio track. So this is where audio would have come back from the Roland XP as an external instrument and it would have been here. But when I listen to the song, I hear bass, a drum loop and some guitar, but there is no track for that Roland. Just the same, this old project was kind of a clue as to the way I used to work and it's a throwback to a time where external MIDI uh, in instruments were used quite a bit. So I opened the MIDI environment just to take a look at this. And if you look at the layer uh, for MIDI instruments, you can look at all objects or global objects, but I'd obviously created these uh, multi-channel or multi-timbral objects. And there's one in there for the XP30. I don't know why there's one for a general MIDI device. Maybe I had some other keyboard connected or something or a drum machine. And interestingly, there's one called XP30 Drums, and there's one for U20. I still have a U20 kicking around in the closet. What's interesting is if you double-click on the XP30, the patch list is there. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. I don't know where I got this, but the bank names look to be correct. These are the banks that are in an XP30. And um, what's a collection of bank messages have been stored under this category of Roland JV2080. And I, I'm not sure, I'm no expert here, but it looks like the maybe the JV2080 had the same patch list as the XP30 or something like that. But look at the other synths that are, are in this thing. It's quite a few. Um, so maybe I got this from somebody off the internet that uh, was using it with an XP30, but had all these other synths already set up. So this is it was pretty cool. I, I was uh, pretty pleased that it was there. So then the question came up, well, how do I use this in a new project if I want to go back to using uh, external instruments? It turns out you can copy this, copy, and then open a new project in Logic. I'm just going to open a recent one that I had. I'm not going to close this one because I'm copying from uh, one device to the next. And then go into Window, open the MIDI environment, go to the music uh, to the MIDI instrument layer, and paste it in. And there, there she be with all of the patch lists. Pretty handy. And um, you'll notice over here it's transmitting on all MIDI ports. I mean, you could, if you have multiple external instruments, you could say, okay, I just want to use uh, MIDI channel one on this device, external device, maybe MIDI channel two on another, MIDI channel 10, typically used for drums. And it is kind of interesting. It's multi-timbral, so you could activate multiple parts. You know, the, these synths were capable of playing a multi-timbral uh, patch and uh, multiple parts at the same time. But in a way, it, it almost makes sense just to use what's in the in the patch library. So what I like about this is with this setup, you can choose the bank and patch that you want from within Logic. You don't have to reach over to the synth itself and make changes there. So <clears throat> what I've done here is... What that is, is I've created a track here. It's nothing more than a basic MIDI track. I did not use the uh, plugin. Just adding MIDI, so I'll show you what I did, is I, I clicked on plus, choose external instrument, but I'm not choosing the external instrument plugin. And that creates this, which is just a, a MIDI track. It's just sending MIDI information over to the external instrument and then I've got the audio coming out of the uh, synth with two jacks plugged into um, my audio interface 
it's coming in th through uh, actually um, an ADAT cable that's connected to my uh, connected to my Apollo Twin X. <clears throat> so that's how that's how you hear it back is uh, through there. So. Just gives you an idea of how it works. The other option is to create a, a plugin. I'm just going to delete this. So I can't remember when Logic came out with a external MIDI instrument plugin, but let me show you how that is different. So here's the typical setup where I've got one track that records the MIDI, and I got another track that could record the audio. So creating using a plugin is kind of a different option. So here, if you choose to add an external MIDI instrument but use the plugin, you can pick the audio input and the outputs. And uh, in my case, my Traveler just has one port, uh, MIDI out port, and I could choose all channels or just channel one. Um, so if you have multiple devices here, you could choose channel one for the XP30, channel two for the U20, hypothetically. So you create that. I'm just gonna to check to make sure I've got the right audio coming back. And you'll see these first three tracks are on mute. So the only thing we're gonna hear here Okay, so if I hit record, and all it's recorded there is the MIDI, not the audio. Plugin, and I'm just going to label that. This is the XP30 external. With the plugin option, there's no control over here of the program information. Okay, it's it's going to play whatever the instrument was last set to. Whereas on the standard MIDI, I'm able to control what patch is being played. So if I choose a, a different uh, And I like that option of being able to choose the sound patch. Directly from Logic instead of having to touch the uh, touch the synth itself. In my case, I'm guessing that I got this XP30 object off the internet somewhere, downloaded it, pasted it in here, and uh, I was off to the races. Um, if you're lucky, the synth that you're using, there's something out there for it that works with Logic. If not, you can actually create a generic uh, multi-instrument. Multi Let me just uh, show you what that would look like. New multi-instrument. And you can initialize the banks and paste in the names. You can cut all names, you see, and you can paste names from a text file. So kind of neat, kind of a throwback, um, but a lot of fun to play around with. I don't know if I'm the kind of person that clicks on subscribe and like, but it might help me out if you do it.